time for round two. We won the die roll and we're going to play first. This hand isn't great, but Tenacious Dead is kind of one of our key cards. Uh, we can get Bubbling Cauldron by drawing it or drawing Bog Brew Rage, and we have two barrage of expendables. So I'm keeping this hand, even though it's not amazing. This is also closer to what I would expect uh, from our deck with four mountains and a swamp, uh, not the other way around. Just going to run this out there. Tenacious Dead in your starting hand also means that we aren't going to be overrun by anything. This is actually interesting. Do we attack for to deal one? But if our opponent has a ha, doesn't have a two drop, we get back where we are dealt two. But then again, if our opponent doesn't have a two drop and attacks with Mutavolt, we do get back for one again, and then we drop the Undead Minotaur. So it's I think it's an even trade. If our opponent doesn't have a 2-drop, and if our opponent does have a 2-drop, which is better for him, we've dealt a damage. So, I believe it's correct to attack, because against an unknown deck, we definitely want to be aggressive so that our combo finish can get there. Might also be facing a sliver deck here, but drawing Shano's Outrage is definitely a good start. There is one more uh, thing that if our opponent has has a land here, but no two drop, then attacking with Mutavolt is actually risking a shock. So it's it's not even it's not even clear if you should attack with every possible hand here. Mutavolt is also pretty nice with Advocate of the Beast. Okay, our opponent is representing Giant Growth here, but is, is willing not to... Oh wow, well, that was an aggressive Giant Growth. Is willing to skip his turn for that, basically. Uh, I'm attacking with both creatures because I think that if our opponent activates Mutavolt here again to get in for two that we are um, heavily favored and he has shown to be willing to cast giant growth um, just for tempo purposes so I'm, I'm fine with that uh, next turn I might leave back something because of our opponent still hasn't played anything but we are winning the race uh, that we are uh, playing here so kind of like just leaving things as they are Okay, Bubbing Cauldron changes things, uh, makes it really easy to just keep back the Tenacious Dead. In fact, we could have actually just attacked also, because dealing damage is no more important than preventing damage. So yeah, in retrospect, I should have just attacked for one. If our opponent animates Mutavolt, then we are still very far ahead. Missed a point of damage there. can just Liturgy of Blood this, but we don't know what else we need to kill. Chandra's Outrage is an instant, but doesn't kill every single creature our opponent could play. Um, Megantic Sliver or something like that. Yeah, I'm just going to play this safe, I think. It's. It looks like our opponent is just missing his second color, so it's isn't out of the question that we just don't see a, uh, a play here. Uh, it looks like our opponent still wants to race here. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Hunt the weak. Yeah, we could have punished that with that with generous outrage, but don't see how we could have really played around that. Uh, maybe there was an argument to be made to keep the Chandra's Outrage anyway. Because it's actually quite difficult to Liturgy of Blood a Mutavolt. Vault. 
at this point we really need a barrage of expendables. I'm trading I'm trading one for one for three here because we do gain four life each turn. Okay, that was a great draw. That might just win it. There aren't many cards that beat this. Especially when your opponent is, has only green lands in play. So we don't even have to be super careful with our Tenacious Dead. Could attack here, force him to make this a creature, and then we Liturgy of Blood it. Oh no, that doesn't work because we have to get back the the Tenacious Dead already. No, let's just let's just do it the slow way. He has one more draw seven, then he's dead. So wouldn't be surprised to see concession here. Yeah. So Giant Growth and Hunt the Weak and Wood One Behemoth, Muta Vault, but. Um, an unknown second color should be able to beat that. No, Fire Shrieker, not that interesting. Ring Flash is okay to counter a giant growth, but as we've seen, we really want to this to play out differently. And I think we are once again just looking to to beat our opponent with a, a close to unbeatable late game. I like our main deck here. It was really confusing to see our opponent just jank with the Muta Vault for 3 extra damage. So a very aggressive line. I mean if we block of course you mute you giant growth, but if we if we don't block then there isn't all that much reason to just use your trick. Opponent is going first after losing game one. Our hand isn't amazing, but I'm still going to keep it. Maybe I'm too conservative about just having something we can play with. Our mana is good and we have a turn 2 bubbling cauldron, turn 3 under Minotaur. So I, I really see no reason to, to mulligan a hand like this which already has one of the key cards of our deck and won't just lose to a, to a quick start. The Firecat might, might be crucial to block Predatory Sliver but Undead Minotaur could do the same. Okay, it looks like there's a sliver construct. So now things already get interesting. If there is a, another predatory sliver in our opponent's hand, then we must play the fire cat. Um, if there is, if there is a giant growth, then we lose lose either of these creatures to the giant growth, no matter how we how we do it. So the question becomes: How likely is it that the undead minotaur is just going to be dominated and if we have it in play we, we basically take seven because of another predatory sliver and then we drop the fire cat. That's still okay. If it's if it's a giant goat then I would rather have the the better creature I think, the better creature to be alive later on. We also have the right cards to stabilize here. No matter what happens. And if the Predatory Sliver attacks into the Undead Minotaur, then it's going to be Giant Growth. Now, I didn't consider Hunt the Weak, which is exactly what's happening here. So, yeah, if I had thought of that option as well, then I probably should have played the Fire Cat. On the other hand, this isn't um, much worse than losing the Minotaur to a giant growth. Opponent did spend his whole turn and Predatory Sliver is only a 3-3 so it's not like it hasn't grown out of out of bounds for us to kill with with the fire cat. Yeah, and Predatory Sliver is, is still attacking so I'm going to try to take the get the trade here. 
and a giant growth. So we gain 4 life from the cauldron. Might be facing a mono green deck, which does seem weird, but I've seen. I've seen worse, so. Ratchet Bomb? Okay. Yeah, Baldwin Cauldron costs 2, so that's an option. Doesn't look like he's interested in killing. Killing tokens. So, yeah, Pitchburn Devils is just awesome here. Can't think of many cards that can punish us for just having a Pitchburn Devils in play with this uh, board on the opposing side. Okay, even that isn't the end of the world, even though it's it's good, of course, for our opponent. He has now now has a 4-4 four, four Predatory Sliver and the 3-3 three, three Sliver Construct. The thing is that I would like to kill the Construct because of the Raider, but in a sense, if opponent isn't attacking with the Construct just to hold off the Raider, that's also good for us. So I'm going to uh, reduce the amount of damage we are taking here. Oh my god. And a hexproof trick. This is pretty insane. Still think we are fine here. Uh, we do go down to five, but we have liturgy of blood against this maniac. I don't think that we can use that we can just um, gain gain life from the cauldron here. We have to accept that Ratchet Bomb could kill it. But if our opponent is dealing damage here, then we are going to draw an extra card, and hopefully our opponent doesn't have another spell here. That would be an important part of our game plan. Okay, Valley Rebirth. The, that looks like a good good thing to have already. Okay, we drew a land, but that's fine. Let's ambush the construct if possible. Barkovich sadly only a 1-3. It isn't going to get anything from our library. Our opponent doesn't know that though. So I'm just going to play it. We do have another land. And it's a 1-3. It, it does something on this board. Tenacious Dead is a great draw. Too bad that we don't have a second cauldron. Seeing how powerful Tenacious Dead is makes me realize how good Reassembling Skeleton was. It did cost one more mana to cast it, but it was just absolutely crazy good. And as you see, we just drew a barrage of expendables, so we're going to go into combo mode. And I'm still going to discard that swamp. There is a lot of cards that are better than swamp. I think it's correct to just draw two here. Don't think it's too important to shoot at this stage, and and the cards are going to give us more options and or or allow us to discard with Academy Raiders, both of which is fine. So Mutavolt isn't an artifact, but just a colorless creature. So Academy Raider is definitely going in, getting in there. We are on three, so sh well, but but we are dropping annoying zombies, so there's actually nothing to be afraid of.
Molten Birth. Or Annoying Zombie, or both. Definitely want the Annoying Zombie in play. And then we could just only keep one red open. No, I like to have more than that. I think I only want the Annoying Zombie in play. Bit conservative. I want to make sure that if our opponent has anything tricky going on with that Muta Vault, that we have at least two red mana to shoot it. We are very close to winning this game, and I don't want to have this been, well, have our opponent steal this from us after we've um, somehow stabilized despite the two Hunt the Weeks. Although I'm I'm not sure if we um, could or should have played around that in, in some way or the other. I'm just going to kill Deadly Recluse here. Trading one of our weaker cards for the spider is definitely good. Act of Treason. Given that we have Act of Treason, we kind of want to entice the block here. On the other hand, it doesn't it doesn't matter all that much. Never going to go for Battle Sliver. I don't think We won the flip, so we get back the rebirth. But once again, I'm going to keep open some red mana just to be safe from the Muta Vault. Looks like something is coming up. By the way, we are on 13 cards in our library and our opponent is on 21. We basically discarded 5 lands. Let's see what happens if we double block this. I'm in no hurry that the dangers of giving our opponent an extra card are really minimal and I just don't want there to be any way to lose the game. Of course if our opponent just has a mountain and a lava axe then we aren't going to beat it because we aren't playing around that by maximizing gnawing zombie because there is no reason for us to believe that our opponent has that but we are playing again um playing around a reasonable number of cards so okay we win the match uh i think only fog would have saved our opponent there and only for one more turn so yeah that was quite convincing but i'm also wondering what happened with our opponent's draft he looks to be just mono green and even though he had some nice blowouts his overall or his overarching strategic direction isn't quite clear. He just basically played two creatures in the beginning of the game, a Predatory Sliver and a Sliver Construct, and then he had to use all these all these tricks, which actually worked out fine for him, but they weren't absolute blowouts. They were basically um, used to trade with our lesser early game cards, and then the second hunt of the week actually was a two for one against him with our Pitch Burn Devils, so it's no wonder that at some point, opponent is going to have six, seven, eight forests in play and and draw blanks, whereas our deck strives on 
synergy more than raw power and well we had academy raiders going so that was that was really what guaranteed that our late game was going to be successful let's see if we can win one more